Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I, as sometimes happens, I have two names for this sermon. The first one I had was Den of Thieves, which is certainly a theme, but I decided to change it to House of God. Um, uh, so we've got both titles in different spots because we've got kind of this balance going on. Um, and the focus of today's message is about the house of God. It's a focus on the temple, but also the church in general and Grace Lutheran Church. It's Palm Sunday, so we read about Jesus marching into Jerusalem with crowds singing praises and laying their cloaks on the road to honor the Messiah entering Jerusalem. However, on Palm Sunday, Jesus came not only to be praised, but also to preach. He came to preach against corruption and to officially pronounce a divine charge against Jerusalem of religious malpractice. He proclaimed judgment upon the temple, prophesying that not one stone would be left upon another. He entered the temple and began driving out the sellers, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. For years, I don't think I quite grasped the severity of these charges. I read Jesus' talk of not one stone being left upon another, kind of like a, a prediction or a prophecy, but I think they are actually a pronouncement, a judgment, if you will, upon the temple. Jesus, he throws out the money changers, right? Pretty familiar to probably most of, to many people. Um, but he, uh, he, he did this not only because people were being fleeced of their money, but because you had to go through the money changers in order to do anything in the temple. In order to make sacrifices, you had to change your Roman coins because Roman coins were not allowed. You had to use temple currency, which my favorite comparison is it's a lot like Chuck E. Cheese money. You can only use it in the temple. It's not good anywhere else. Um, you, you couldn't do anything in the temple without first exchanging Roman coins for temple coins. So Jesus is, is basically shutting down the whole operation. In fact, Jesus is condemning the whole Concept, conception of God and salvation that the temple was portraying or perpetuating, you might say. The way people were acting in the temple, the way they used the temple, it was a cry and shame. That's why Jesus quotes from Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah is one of the most uh, critical uh, bordering almost on cynical of the Old Testament prophets. It's Jeremiah that says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Jeremiah was to sent to proclaim how corrupt and wicked Jerusalem was at the time. If you were listening to the Old Testament lesson, uh, I almost forgot about how, how harsh it was. Jeremiah was telling God's people you didn't just get one thing wrong, you got it all wrong. For example, um, in, in Jeremiah chapter 5, there's this poem about Jeremiah who's running throughout Jerusalem, and he sees injustice everywhere he goes at every level. At first he thinks it's just a problem of the lower classes and the poor, but then he realizes as it keeps going through the city, that the great are just as guilty and the leaders are worst of all. In chapter 9, Jeremiah wishes he could just leave the city entirely because it was full of adultery and betrayal. Jeremiah says, you can't trust anyone in Jerusalem, including your own brother or neighbor. And it culminates with the worst part is that heaping oppression upon oppression and deceit upon deceit they refuse to know me, declares the Lord. Now, Jesus quotes Jeremiah because he's delivering pretty much the same message that Jeremiah was. The whole city is corrupt and is due for judgment. Everyone's 
aiming at the wrong target, you might say. They're loyal to the wrong sorts of things. They won't repent. But God's house should be where God's people express their sorrow over sin. But instead, the temple and the religious establishment of the time was all wrong. So Jesus calls the temple a place where crooks like to hang out. It's it's like he's comparing it to like a, a mafia pub or a heroin den or a house of ill repute. It was not helping people. It was oppressing them. It was not encouraging people to confess or come to Yahweh with humble hearts. In fact, the religious establishment was actively trying to turn people away from God's Messiah. It turns out the temple was just another institution obsessed with its own plots, power, and profits. And the chief priests were treating the temple as if it were not God's house, but their house. The focus and energy of God's house and his people should be upon confession and reconciliation, prayer and praise. God's house is a house of prayer, not a house for power brokers. God's house is a place where people cry out to the Lord for forgiveness, salvation, and aid. Or how about Grace Lutheran Church? We know this is not just our house, it's God's house. And sure, we are sinners, we have our moments, all of us. But I actually think we, we recognize, or maybe it's we're in the process of learning is the better way to put it, that we don't just do what we want in God's house. Rather, we are aiming to make grace a place where people confess, pray, and we preach Jesus Christ. Grace is a place where we share the gospel. And I want to focus on that word, share. Now, I know it's a formidable challenge to share. It's hard for kids to share, even with their siblings. It's hard for spouses to share sometimes. It's hard to share. Even sharing the gospel is hard. And sharing the same space where we share the gospel, well, that's hard too. You might say that's doubly hard. And yet, personally, I really appreciate that Grace has been willing to share. And I'm talking specifically about, there's a lot of different ways, but um, one that comes to mind is sharing with Ethiopian brothers and sisters in Christ. And and we're not just sharing space at a good rate, but we we share with our community um, and with the Oromo and the Kingdom of God congregations. And I think that this reflects the attitude and desire of of the Father of us all who sent his son to die so that all might be redeemed. And it's God-pleasing for us to share with one another whenever possible. Um, and it's, it's important to, to find the right balance. It's important for a, adults to help kids to grow in their faith. And um, it's important uh, for um, adults sometimes to exercise patience and rejoice that the faith is being passed on to the next generation. It's also important for kids to be respectful of others worshiping and to sometimes accept discipline and instruction. And the reality is it's a challenge for both parties to do that at times. Um, But God often has a a way of uh, using challenges for kids and adults alike to humble us and teach us along the way. Sharing is challenging, but we're doing so for a reason, for the service of sharing Christ. And and I can tell you, you don't get a chance to hear people say this, but parents and and the pastors of both Ethiopian congregations say they are so, so grateful. And I think it's really sincere. It's not just, it's really not just for sharing the building, but even more importantly, for teaching their children. Uh, because the, the language barrier makes that uh, challenging for them to do. But, you know, for instance, the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and Luther in Germany knew 
It was better to worship in a language you understood <laughs> than in a language you don't understand. And we're uh, assisting and helping both kids and adults to do exactly that. Um, it's, um, of course, it's not just about the kids, and it's not just about the adults. It's not about one group versus another. It's about the good news of Jesus for all. Uh, because the church, it's, it's not really primarily a place where we get what we want, you might say. The church is where, well, it's a house of prayer, as Jesus said. It's where Jesus teaches and forgives us. The church is, well, the body of Christ, you and me and uh, many others. God's house is a house where repentant sinners can come. No matter, is for repentant sinners, no matter what age or language. Now, it's like a lot of things in life. It's not like this is a destination that we've arrived at. No, it's, it's more like an ongoing conversation or struggle or sometimes wrestling match and it, it takes work, but I think that's to be expected. And in fact, I think difficulties and challenges are almost proof that we're doing something good. Living faithfully as God's people and loving others requires sacrifice and effort. Um, if church life is too easy and comfortable, we're probably not doing something right. But it's wonderful that grace is, um, that grace is a place where we share the gospel. And that Thank, thank you for being willing to be on this journey, and probably thank you especially to those of you who have had more heartaches or, or troubles or had to do more work because of it. Um, it's, this is a place and always has been a place where grace wants to share, whether it be sharing our food with the community or our, our gym um, with the neighborhood uh, or even now uh, our, our worship space at times. It takes perseverance to share and to do the right thing. Um, and, and many of you have worked and put in extra hours to make that possible, and thanks. And, uh, and I also promise that it's for a good cause and will continue to improve. Um, but I think that you can, especially on a Palm Sunday, appreciate the bottom line here. Children and adults are praising the Lord and will be praising the Lord on Palm Sunday. You know, the chief priests wanted to Jesus to stop the children and crowds from singing, but Jesus replied, out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise, quoting Psalms. And later he says, I tell you, if these were silent, it would be a rock concert in here because the very stones would sing. Um, this is... Uh, the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord because Jesus is the true temple, as he says elsewhere. He is the cornerstone. He was the stone the builders rejected at Calvary, but his resurrection at Easter is proof he is God's son. And we are now part of God's house and part of the household of God. God loves us, even though we... <laughs> sometimes make his life more complicated and challenging. And that's why we love, because he first loved us. And Grace Lutheran Church, we remember, is not our house, but thank the Lord, it's his house. And we are privileged to be here, sharing and caring for this house and those who are in it. And we are his people who are indeed called by his name. In Jesus' name, amen.